Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, tonight was uh, a, a great night. I think we all realized that uh, we certainly could have spent a lot more time here getting around to all the tables. My name is Dave Jaworski, and I'm running for Mayor of Waterloo. And when I first started running for Mayor back in January, I wanted to get involved in our neighborhoods. And one of the first neighborhood I lived in when I came here to Waterloo was Sunnydale. So I felt very comfortable going to my old town of, or my old neighborhood of Sunnydale to see what was going on. And I found out the House of Friendship had a site there and was doing food distribution regularly on Thursdays. So I began regular participation in that. And it was through that that I found out that in June they were doing a fundraising drive for a yard sale and a bake sale. And what I realized is I could partner with my neighborhood and my friends to bring things to the yard sale. And through that opportunity, um, it, it brought a lot of uh, goods into that community so that I had actually five truckloads of uh, stuff delivered to the yard sale, raising uh, several hundred dollars. And that was through a partnership, just uh, fortuitousness. And really the story there is about inspiration, communication, and collaboration. Making sure that our neighborhoods know what the other neighborhoods are going through and partnerships. Because I believe your neighborhood, that's where your sense of belonging in our community starts, right in your own neighborhood. So how, what are some things we can do to help with that? Well, number one, uh, we can improve our neighborhoods through continuing on with the City of Waterloo's Neighborhood Matching Grants Program, which has been very successful, and I want to continue on that. We can improve avail uh, availability of, uh, of services, the access to services that you can get through a 311 system implemented first just nine years ago in the City of Calgary. We can implement a, such a thing here at a regional uh, city and township level. And also, we can uh, uh, make the best out of the communities that we have, the public spaces that we have, through community gardens. The City of Waterloo has a Partners in Parks program, and we need to continue that and ensure that we make a vibrant community for all to get outside. Thank you very much. Well, good evening. It's, uh, it's good to be here. I came here tonight not knowing what to expect. It's been a journey of learning for me. I came here not to tell you what I'm going to do for you, but to find out what you want me to do for you. And uh, one of the things I was given was this uh, for, uh, form here, Water of the Region Votes. And I went through it and I looked through it and you know everything on here makes perfect sense to me. Uh, I see nothing there that I couldn't sign off on and work toward. So this is a good thing. Now I didn't get a chance to get to every table, I only managed to get to two. I got to the neighborhood table and I got to the digital inclusion table. And both of those uh, are important to me. I grew up in a town of 400 people. So I know what it's like to be in an inclusive neighborhood. Everybody knew everybody else's business. Uh, but uh, certainly it's not that bad here. We do have a great neighborhood where I live though, up on Bristol Street uh, in Ward 7. And uh, people are there to help other people when there's a need. So that's a sort of uh, strong neighborhood community that I think it's important and we can continue building uh, in that direction. As far as digital inclusion goes, well, you know, I'm, I'm a computer freak myself. I spend a lot of time in front of my computer. I shoot and edit videos. I make uh, photo books, send them off and get them sent back, hardcover books, all kinds of stuff. Email, I've got Facebook, Twitter, the whole works. I love my computers. Uh, maybe I'm an exception as one of the uh, older candidates here. Uh, a lot of seniors don't. We need to find a way to get the seniors to use computers. We need to find a way to get uh, Wi-Fi throughout the neighborhood, throughout the city, so that we can make sure that everybody has access to online, because that's where everything's going these days, online. If you're not online, you're nowhere. Snail mail is going to go away. They're starting already to stop delivery. So we need to make sure that everyone in the community has access to the uh, computers and to email and to the internet. So that's another priority I would have. But anything on this list is also a priority. And uh, I'm just so glad that uh, I came here tonight to learn what your needs are and to find out uh, ways that we can help. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. And I must tell you that this is my favorite event uh, of the campaign season. It's the event where we sit around tables and we, we hear each other's and we understand the struggles that people are facing. And what I always feel at the end of an evening like this is, oh, what a wonderful city we could have if we really heard the people who live in it. And uh, what a mess we can make of things when we don't listen to the people who need us. Uh, so my campaign is very much, as you know, about listening and hearing. And my view of the city is service. We are in the service business. And uh, I have a vision of the city 
be viewed as a model, as an example of good service. And the way we do that is we open up our, our, our city hall, uh, we engage the public, uh, we understand the issues. I very much feel that all the issues we discussed tonight and accessibility uh, is, is a huge one. Uh, to understand those issues, we have to be out in the community. And where do we find the answers to those issues? In the community. And uh, you understand better than anybody the struggles that you face. And you also understand how we have to fix them uh, and what doesn't work. Uh, simply uh, having an ivory tower government making decisions and, and ignoring the answers is, is created quite a mess. So I'm here for you. I'm here to serve you. I would be honored to be your mayor. Uh, let's get busy. We can make this a wonderful city, and we can only do that with your help. So please continue to be engaged. Please continue to talk to us. Uh, I will be out there. I enjoy people. I don't enjoy being in an office with the door closed. So uh, this is the beginning of a lot of discussion. Good evening, everybody, thank and thank you for coming. Uh, similar to Dave McDonald, because I was with him the whole time for some reason. Uh, I know we also made it to only two tables, and we were kind of moving slowly. And well, we did talk about cloud services when we talked about digital stuff. It was a little bit different than what we were used to, as normally with Dave we talk about the weather, which is understandable. Uh, this actually was really interesting to me because a lot of my platform is actually based upon this concept, which is the brown bag meeting type system, where I actually want councillors and the mayors, myself, going out to different community groups and sitting down and having a proper conversation. Uh, I've said it time and time again, the City of Waterloo has been doing a great job trying to interact with everybody, but we can always do more. And the one thing I think we struggle with is we always invite people to City Hall. And while it's a great option and we've been doing a good job of, of getting people out there, you really don't get that much time to have a proper conversation, which doesn't really go much back and forth. So the brown bag beating idea is exactly what we did here today, is you sit down at a table, you have a great discussion, and you actually have a full conversation with other people disagreeing with you or agreeing, and adding different types of input. And that, to me, is what community engagement is about. It's about actually having a proper dialogue. So as your mayor, that's my goal to continue doing that every single month at least. If Maybe more, depending on council, you know, they have more power than we do, so they'll kind of tell us what we can and can't do, which is an interesting thing and great for it. Um, in terms of my uh, experiences growing up, I've always kind of came from a Middle Eastern family. We came to Canada, we really didn't have too much when we moved here. Uh, there was a huge language barrier, which is kind of some of the issues we discussed here, and that whole idea of community and trying to build that. And that's something that we were lucky enough that in our neighborhood, it was a lot of other Middle Eastern families. But you don't find that anymore. Now it's kind of a global economy, it's a global city where people are moving all about. And that's another item we have to concern, worry about, and that's getting transportation there so that we can continue moving about. Waterloo has done a phenomenal job moving us forward. We still have a long way to go, and I think we've, we're going to that point. And I think in terms of a community, Waterloo's doors are open. We're working, we'll try to work with everybody, and no matter who gets into this position, our goal is to continue building that and to continue moving us forward. We may not all agree on how we want to do it or what we think of the city, but at the end of the day, we all want to help. My name is Artie Willings, and I'm running for councillor in Ward 2 on the west side of Waterloo. Like the people before me, I only made it to, uh, I think, about two tables also, but uh, very interesting. And one of them I wanted to make sure was um, something close to my heart, community social planning. I've been very involved in nonprofit uh, housing for the past um, 22 years. Uh, I grew up in a Mennonite home, so giving back is just like breathing. It's expected. It's actually something you want to do. And I've really enjoyed my time on the boards, and I'm still... Um, on that. Um, I believe the biggest priority in um, this area is nonprofit um, housing. Um, if we get people off the streets, if we get people in proper housing, if we get people not spending all their money on housing, it just alleviates so many other problems, um, health, social, and, and so on. Um, what would I do if uh, elected to, um, to do that? Um, a good friend of mine, Mike Bull, who owns uh, Blaze Properties, um, about um, six, seven years ago, the, um, uh, the private sector, hooking up with them, he built them, and um, along with Menno Homes, so you had this nonprofit and uh, for-profit merging together. Uh, it was a win-win situation. I can see much more of that happening. Um, I can see development fees being either uh, cancelled or reduced on nonprofit housing. Um, I could see uh, lower taxes. Um, currently, the biggest expense for a lot of these nonprofit organizations 
organizations is their taxes. And I can see better coordination with um, the region, the city, um, the nonprofit organizations, and uh, the province on nonprofit housing. So that is my biggest priority, and uh, those are things I would do if elected. Hello, my name is Janice Moore, and I'm also running in Ward 2. I made it to four tables, um, and but I picked up two of them that I thought were the more important issues. The first table that I made it to was the community social planning, and we talked a lot there about neighborhood associations, and that neighborhoods are where everything starts and where, where people come together. That's where the community happens. It, the problem in the city of Waterloo, though, is that the mandates for, this, for the um, neighborhood associations is only about rec and leisure. And so they need to have a broader mandate if they're going to be doing more. I would like to see the neighborhood associations change so that they can be advocates, so that they can be providers of more than just rec and leisure, so that they can be able to speak to and be voices for their community to uh, counselors and, and have much um, more input from the neighborhood associations. Um, the other table that I made it to was civic engagement. And we talked a lot there about how to get people engaged. And in my neighborhood, there are many people who can't vote. And they can't vote because they are permanent residents, newcomers. And I think that, that if you come here and you pay property taxes and you use the services, that whether or not you're a Canadian citizen, I think at least at the municipal level you should be able to vote. Now that's not something I can do at the council table, but it's certainly something that I'm going to be advocating for um, at the level where we can make that change. Because I think that our city is it has too many people who are not getting the right to vote who should be allowed to. And I think civic engagement has to start with being able to have a voice to say what you do with your tax dollars and with your services. So those are the two important issues that I took from tonight and, and will bring forward to me when I get to the council table. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for, 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 for coming out here. My name is Andre Kovacic. I'm running for uh, Council in Ward 3. Uh, my intent, uh, I have, there's a lot of ideas that I have on my plate. Uh, first of all, what I think we should all do, and as a council, as, as a representative, I intend to listen to the people and fight for the people, represent them, and actually be a voice for the government, and not just, you know, you know, just be out there. I want to be proactive and help for you, know, fight for you. Uh, I'm definitely very interested in, in improving the transportation in Waterloo, in the city, because right now it's, it's, it's very, it's, it's very inefficient. It's, uh, so transportation has to be addressed, and primarily I'm looking at buses. So uh, bus transportation, we have to improve the frequency, the efficiency, the cost. I'm also going to be advocating for free bus services for the seniors, and uh, we need to make sure that we have transportation for everybody at all times, okay? Uh, I'm also interested in looking at improving the living standards and also the cost, the affordability of living in Waterloo, and not just for the seniors, but for the students as well, because Waterloo is we do have a large uh, student population and we need to make sure that they have low cost affordable rent. Right now, they've been forced by, by bylaws to move into very expensive uh, uh, rentals. I think that's very unfair. It affects families, it affects seniors. I want to fight that, reverse this bylaw and ensure that students have low cost rentals and, and ensure that it's a win-win for the city, for the renters, and that, that includes the families, the people, and also the students. Uh, uh, well, I need, <clears throat> excuse me. I also want to make sure that we also spend time and en energy in social services. We need to help our community. We need to help families and the needy people. Uh, I want to be here to represent. I want to hear. I want to be here for you to fight. And uh, thank you very much for showing up. And uh, I appreciate that. You know, on, on next week Monday, everybody comes out and you know casts your opinion, your voice, and and. I hope everybody gets involved in this uh, election. Thank Hi so everyone, much. thanks for coming. I'm Karim Yusuf, I'm running for Ward 5 Council. Um, just to tell you a little bit about myself, I've been uh, a Waterloo resident uh, for 19 years now. Uh, I went to St. David's, that's where I went to high school. I'm a financial planner right now. Um, so uh, I really like this event. Actually, out of all the events that we've done, this has been my favorite so far. Um, I took a lot out of uh, sort of the engagement from people. I appreciated uh, everyone that was here to share how they felt and we'll, you know, that's what it's all about. 
Um, I think one thing that we have, uh, one thing that came out today, and one thing that has been coming out when I've been going around canvassing is that people just don't feel like they're engaged. Uh, they don't know what the issues are. They don't understand what's happening around them. They feel left out uh, out of a lot of the decisions that are happening in the city. Um, so uh, one thing that I, I that I would like to see specifically in my ward, just because it is so uh, it is so big, is implement things like neighborhood associations. Uh, I know the city offers things like grants already, so uh, but encouraging more people to more residents to get involved in that respect. So it's, it's a way to, uh, for us in council to have an access to our neighborhoods in a clean, easy way. I think that's what neighborhood associations will will bring to the table. Um, I also think that uh, right now. Affordable housing is also an issue in my ward right now. We have uh, seniors and uh, low-income families who are struggling to uh, pay for the increased uh, cost of taxes and, and things like that. So we really need to have a plan in place for that. We don't have a plan right now. Uh, we have right now in the region over 3,000 people on the waiting list for affordable housing. So uh, something like that, I think I'd like to bring that into uh, up for discussion and actually put a plan in place to uh, help people who need it most and you know what we what we saw with the blackberry layoffs not too long ago we had a lot of uh, 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 we had a lot of people who were laid off who had to be uh, were forced to move to a kitchen or cambridge and unfortunately when they were up uh, when they were back on their feet they they didn't come back so something like that we need to have a plan in place thanks so much good evening and and, and thank all of you for being present tonight so that we could have such a dynamic uh, and wide-ranging conversation on issues that are truly important to our community. A couple of things I want to say off the top. One, I, I'm white, I'm male, I was born in Canada, and I'm married to a woman. I recognize the significant privilege position that that puts me in society for being able to get things that other people that I don't understand that experience can't get as easily. So when the Social Planning Council a couple of elections ago uh, offered to have people uh, host kitchen table meetings to talk about poverty issues in our community. Uh, I took that one on as a counselor. And I didn't do that in my living room table or in my kitchen. I did that at City Hall because that's where that voice needs to be heard. And one of the things that came up in that conversation, and Trudy raised it as did others, when you go back 20 years ago, we had programs to do various things, and then we had a small poverty program. Today, every single program we run in the city has to have a poverty lens so that people are able to ask for it. Aside from public parks and libraries, everything else that we do has to have a poverty lens to be able to let people access it. Uh, and that's not right. I think fundamentally the property tax base isn't the base where we can fully resolve these issues. We need to tinker around those edges to make those programs more accessible. But fundamentally, it's a money problem. It's a capacity for people to be able to fully participate in our community. And we need to come together as those voices and speak to senior levels of government to talk about a way to get government off of the backs of, of people's lives and, and to be able to give them that respect and dignity to have enough money to fully participate in society so that every program we run doesn't have to have a poverty lens, doesn't have to invade people's privacies in their lives to understand their living standards and their means and ask them really difficult questions about their lives before we let them into a program uh, to manage some of that. So we got to come together on some of that. We talked about lots of great things tonight, but fundamentally we need to be able to come together to make sure that everybody has the capacity to participate in the community. Thank you.